Ever wished you could just, like, reach into your favorite game and see how it works? You know, the code behind those epic explosions and headshots. You're talking about pulling back the curtain on game development magic. Exactly. And today, we're diving deep into a piece of gaming history that did just that. The release of the Doom source code back in 97. And not just any game, right? Doom, I mean, it practically wrote the book on first-person shooters, yeah. death matches, crazy levels, even, like, the whole modding scene we know today. Yeah, all those late-night LAN parties fueled by Mountain Dew and pixelated gore. Good times. A lot of that traces back to this one game. No kidding. But back then, game devs kept their code, like, super secret. This wasn't sharing a recipe. This was more like giving away the recipe for fire. It's what made your game unique. Right, like Coca-Cola's secret formula. Exactly. So for John Carmack, the mastermind behind Doom, to just release it to the world, it was huge. Absolutely. It was a seismic event. And what's fascinating is our primary source for this deep dive is the original readme file from that source code repository. It's still on GitHub. No way, really. Yeah. It's got that nonprofit use clause in there, which is a whole other rabbit hole. Right. Like, what does that even mean in practice? It gets complicated. <laughs> but the main message is pretty clear. Carmack wanted people to learn from it, to improve it. He even says he's hoping for a coordinated net release of an improved, backwards-compatible version of Doom on multiple platforms. Like, he wasn't just giving away the code, he was issuing a challenge. Exactly. And this is where the story goes beyond just Doom and becomes about the whole philosophy of open source. Because this was 1997. We were all still figuring out this whole internet thing. Right. Dial-up modems, those awful AOL sounds. The open source movement was just finding its feet. So for someone as influential as Carmack to embrace that, even partially, was huge. It sent a powerful message, and that's what makes this deep dive so fascinating. We get to see how this one decision, this belief in shared knowledge, had a ripple effect that we're still feeling today. Okay, so we've got this legendary source code, this artifact of gaming history. What's it actually like to, you know, dig through it? It's funny you use the word artifact because, honestly, reading through this code mm -hmm. really is like stepping back in time. You can practically see John Carmack wrestling with these technical limitations, mm -hmm. trying to create something groundbreaking. And he was known for, like, squeezing every last drop of performance out of the hardware, right? Absolutely. One thing that jumps out is how he tackled the graphics. You know, the re talks about the rendering engine. Yeah. That's what takes all the game data and, like, turns it into the images you see on screen. Right, like how the game knows what to draw and when. Exactly. And a big challenge is figuring out what's actually visible to the player at any given moment. Right. You don't want the computer wasting time drawing stuff that's behind you or off screen. Makes sense, especially with the limited power they had back then. Right. So this whole process of figuring out what to draw is called clipping. And in the redatum, Carmack actually describes his approach, which involves some pretty clever math. Oh, I bet. So he's just laying out his secret sauce. The tricks that made Doom's graphics so iconic. Pretty much. Yeah. But here's the really cool part. He also uses the read with me to, like, reflect on his own work. Points out where he could have done things better. He even admits some parts of the code are more complicated than they need to be. Wait, seriously. Even Carmack, the coding rock star, had moments of, what was I thinking? It seems so. He talks about how he could simplify certain calculations or optimize the rendering pipeline even further. Uh. It's a good reminder that even the best in the business, they're always learning and refining their process. I love that. It makes this whole thing feel less like a history lesson and more like, you know, a master class in creative problem solving. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. And it's this openness, this willingness to share even his mistakes. That's part of what fostered such an amazing community around Doom. Because it wasn't just about the code itself. It was about inviting others to join the journey, right? To take what was there and build on it. Okay, so the doors to Doom's code are wide open, what happens next? Are we suddenly swimming in a sea of, like, doom but with werewolves or something? It's actually uh, even wilder than that. Think about 1997 for a second, sharing big files. Not exactly a walk in the park. Oh, right. Dial-up. Downloading a picture of a cat could take, like, an hour. Exactly. So yeah. the doom source code, it wasn't instantly everywhere, but it did start spreading through those online communities that could handle it. And these weren't just your average gamers. More like the hardcore tech wizards. Yeah. Programmers, modders, the people who had to know how the magic happened. So it's like they got the blueprints to a Ferrari and were like, hold my floppy disk. That's a great analogy. And yeah, they went nuts. New levels, new enemies, even whole new ways to play. This was before DLC was even a thing. So this kind of 
like community driven explosion. Yeah. Revolutionary. It wasn't just messing with the game we knew, right? Didn't people start getting Doom to run on, like toasters and stuff? The Doom fridge is legendary for a reason. That came a bit later, but it proves the point. Because that code was open, people could experiment, push the limits of what was possible. So Carmack accidentally launched a movement. Kind of. The release of Doom's source code poured gasoline on the open source fire. Sharing knowledge led to incredible things, even if nobody predicted them at the time. It's kind of beautiful when you think about it. One decision all those years ago still echoing through the world of games and tech. Exactly. And it's a good reminder that the most groundbreaking stuff, it often comes from letting people tinker and play and share. And on that note of collaborative chaos, we're wrapping up this deep dive into Doom's source code. Hope you enjoyed this trip back to the 90s. Join us next time. And we'll, oh, well, who knows what we'll uncover. That's half the fun. Until then, keep exploring.